Welcome, uh, and thank you for hosting this important climate service. My name is Mark Antoine, and I am Tier Fund's country director for Haiti. The climate crisis for me and for so many other people, our team, our neighbors, um, is not just an important issue, but it's truly our, our reality. Um, we gather here today with thousands of others to bring COP26 to the foot of the cross, to pray for our world leaders and intercede for those who are most impacted by this crisis. Uh, please join me in praying now for Pete and Carol, who will share God's word uh, and bring us closer to the heart of climate justice for which God cares so deeply. May God bless you with this comfort um, at easy answers, half truths uh, and superficial relationships. May God bless you with anger <laughs> um, at injustice, uh, oppression and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. Uh, and may God bless you with enough foolishness that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and to the poor. Amen. Savior God to thee 
How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art It is such a privilege to be with you in this way on this very special COP26 Sunday as world leaders gather in Glasgow to discuss literally the future of our planet. Wherever you're watching this and uh, whether you're participating online or uh, in the gathered church service, thank you for joining us to think and pray about climate justice with the planet warming, uh, resulting in floods and famines and fires, all the terrible things we so often see in our newspapers. And these things particularly afflicting the poorest people in our world. This really matters. Some people, of course, say that uh, environmental concern has got very little to do with Christianity. In fact, um, just the advertising for this event uh, has got people in touch with me on social media and so on, uh, accusing me of all kinds of things. They've accused me of being woke, uh, of just getting on some environmental bandwagon, of deviating from scripture, and even of having brought into some great global conspiracy. I'm sure you've experienced similar things too. One person even asked me outright, what on earth climate justice has got to do with the gospel? <laughs> and I replied, 
everything, absolutely everything. This isn't just about, um, you know, the way we travel, the way we shop, uh, the way we do or don't recycle. Those things matter. And this isn't just for zealous young Extinction Rebellion activists and aging tree huggers and David Attenborough fans. This is for all of us and especially for us as Christians. I'm going to explain why. This is about the way that we think, the way we pray and the heart of our purpose as people made by the Creator God. So let's turn uh, together to the start of the Bible, to Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, where we read, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. One of the first things that God asks us to do is to take care of the world that he's made. The original Hebrew word here is orbad, which means to tend the garden, to cultivate it, even to serve the land. We're not to exploit the earth, but to nurture and serve it. It's not just there to serve us, we're there to serve it. So the Christian worldview must challenge the greed of unrestricted capitalism continually. The great theologian Thomas Aquinas argued that we should never think of creation as just a one-off event with a before and after. God did it and now we've got it. Instead, Aquinas said that creation is an ongoing process. It's continuous. God has made today. He's continually renewing, remaking, sustaining his creation. And this is important. He has chosen to do so in partnership with us. He asks us to tend the garden. I remember uh, I was on a holiday at my mum's house. She lives by the beach and there's just this stunning beach. I was down worshipping the Lord at the beauty of it all and, and just lost in wonder, love and praise. And then I noticed behind me on the beach so much plastic and rubbish that I went home. I got our two young sons and we took bin liners and we filled uh, two bin liners each, that's six bin liners with rubbish. We, th this was part of, I felt, just being a Christian, caring for the world, tending the garden. And then I went back two days later to the same beach. There'd been a storm and all of the plastic, all of the mess had filled back up again. It was disheartening. That's why, I guess, as well as engaging personally, we've got to engage politically. In order to tend the garden, as we've been commanded, we must contend with human selfishness and greed, even at a structural level. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 says to us, well, the Apostle Paul urges us, first of all, when we gather to worship, we should offer petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving for all those in authority over us, that all may go well with us in the land. I reckon this is probably uh, one of the most disobeyed commandments in the British church. We rarely pray for those in authority over us when we come together to worship. But at a moment like this, with the world's leaders gathering in Glasgow, in one of our nations, with so much at stake, we must surely pray that they will have wisdom beyond human wisdom and foresight beyond just human expediency, and courage beyond their own personal political short-term ambition. I believe that we need, as the people of God, to repent for the way that we have treated the world. I'm just ashamed to acknowledge that the worst culprit of environmental destruction for most of the past three centuries has been the supposedly Christian worldview West. It is time for us to repent of our sinful exploitation of the garden that we have been commissioned to serve, to tend, to cultivate, to care for. And we also think we need to repent because 
let's be honest, the real root of the problem here is not political, it's human greed. It is the heart of the human problem, as Cheston says, is the problem of the human heart. Change begins not just with the G7, but with me, with the way I shop, the way I travel, the way I care for that tiny little bit of the world with which I've been entrusted. I long for the day when every person who becomes a Christian kind of naturally as part of the package becomes a climate activist because they realize that their salvation doesn't just mean they kind of get into heaven when they die, but it affects the way they live their lives, the way they vote. They realize that they have just joined a 2000 year old global conspiracy ganging up together to serve and save the planet for the glory of its creator. This really could be our greatest moment. You know, the church with its 1.4 billion members could speak truth to power prophetically. That's why we need to petition him, to pray to him. That's why we need to obey his original commandment to tend the garden, to care for the poor and to fight, therefore, for climate justice. And ultimately, this for us as Christians is what it means to pray, thy kingdom come. We are asking in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus' rule and reign in every sphere of a renewed world would come to us, not just saving people out of a dying world, but saving a dying world by the power of his life, death and resurrection. Amen. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for caring about these issues. Let's make a difference. Hi everybody, my name is Carol Nanga from Nairobi, Kenya, founder of Msingi Trust, an organization I started in 2017 to make the connections between faith, social justice, activism, and advocacy. We'll be reading from Matthew 19, 16 to 22, on the parable of the rich young ruler. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother also. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all this. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away, grieving, for he had many possessions. So you might be asking yourself, what does the rich young ruler and climate change have in common? And I have been mulling over this verse for the past two weeks and I feel um, that God was placing it in my heart that many of us are, the, are like the rich young ruler, wanting to do good, wanting to make change, but the cost is too high. I find that the saving grace in this story is that we do not know whether the young ruler came back to Jesus or not. This is good because it gives us options. Do we do what we need to do or do we keep our wealth? We know that uh, by the end of this decade, 132 million people will be pushed into extreme poverty by the climate emergency. 132 million people sounds like just a number, but as we know, these numbers have names. These are our friends, these are our siblings, these are our sisters. And so um, what will you do for our siblings? These are people that live in the swollen Lake Baringo in Kenya or those communities in Mau Forest in Kenya. They will suffer from logging. They will suffer from increased water levels in the lakes. They have already been displaced. This climate change conversation has actual um, implications to real life people, 
to communities that have lived in these ecosystems for so long. And so what do we do? What questions do we need to be asking ourselves? What, um, what theologies do we need to start writing or creating? What actions as the church do we need to do? If you look at many traditional stories of origin, nature is involved and it is core to the origin and the well-being and the birth of the community. Most of our cultures in the world have a connection to the garden and therefore a responsibility to tend, nurture and protect the garden because the garden was home, the garden was their belonging, it was where they came from. Colonization, Christianity and modernization happened and many communities were distanced from their stories of origin. The Genesis story of creation happens in a garden where there is lushness, identity formation and communion with God and belonging happens in the garden. Sin and disobedience happens and then and there is the process of being cut off from the garden. Our continued disconnection to the garden story, to its importance and its connectivity to our communal identity is core to climate change. The stories we have of sacred trees, rivers and mountains also give us a mandate to care for them. Many of the harmful behaviors that cause climate change have come about because we have deviated from the stories of who we are. When we listen to the rich young ruler asking, what do I need to do? He is asking, what is my story? And so when God directs, uh, when Jesus directs him back to, to selling of everything, to take care of the most vulnerable, that is hard. It is a difficult ask, and but it is a reminder of who we are. And so we need to question ourselves, uh, our, inner, our inner beings, and ask ourselves, what if we did not need all these things that we think we need? How, how, how would we save the environment? I also want to have the conversation on, for us to think about our gardens, our return to the garden, our return to the Genesis story, our return to, to home, our return to lushness, to green, our return to who we are as caretakers, as custodians of this nature that God gave us. And so as the rich young ruler went back uh, into his house and maybe had a lot of questions to ask and to respond to, and actions to do, we need to ask ourselves, what does it take for us to, to, to be saved, to gain eternal life? It means going back home. It means going back to our safety spaces and asking, do I really need all of this? Tell me what a friend we have in Our sins and griefs to bear And what a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit
precious Savior still our refuge Take it to the Lord in prayer Do thy friends despise for safety Take it to the Lord in prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Creator God, who made all things, we acknowledge as your handiwork, we stand alongside all which you have created. Trees, rivers, mountains and valleys, soaring birds and scuttling creatures, all are held within your care. May we grow in our love and appreciation for your creation, and may our awe and wonder draw us closer to you, the God of all things. Your kingdom come. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. For you so loved the world, the cosmos, the entirety of creation, of which we humans are just one part. May we learn again how to care for this planet. As we pause and consider the climate emergency, we remember that we're praying to the Lord of all the earth. Give us today our daily bread. Lord, grant us the wisdom to care for your earth. Sharing your provision and goodness with all our neighbours. Founded on the covenant of your love. Lord God, you made the world and declared it was very good. As temperatures rise, storms rage, forests burn, and islands sink, it is the people who have done the least to cause the climate crisis who are suffering the most. And I go a diamond risk. We stand together in sorrow. We ask for forgiveness, for you are the God of all, who restores all relationships when we repent. Forgive us for decades of inaction and for not living in accordance with your will. As we forgive those who sin against us. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority. World leaders gathered at COP26 carry a huge burden of responsibility over this world that you love so much. We hold them in our prayers. May they have humble and wise hearts. We pray for anointed diplomacy, boldness and conviction to show your love to those who have least. We pray for unity among the nations and for compelling voices and leaders to rise up so that miraculously action will begin. 
Chiwabe mpera. Chiwatu kulira manjamano. Chifukati kabe mpera. Muma anva. But deliver us from evil. May we remember that we are a global community. Our actions and choices affect one another. Help us resist the temptation to make choices for our convenience and to consider how those choices affect our neighbors across the world. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Help us respond with the radical love of Jesus. A love that disrupts the status quo and sacrifices itself to bring restoration. This is our responsibility. This is our worship. Lord, renew us in a steadfast spirit and cleanse our hearts. Renew our minds and transform our lives. Renew our world. Car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire. Now and forever. Amen.
Right now, uh, around the world, uh, it is the poorest who are being hit the hardest by climate change and this climate crisis. Families and communities are facing droughts, floods, and storms that destroy homes and livelihoods uh, and threaten people's very survival. Today, you can help support the most vulnerable um, of your global neighbors. Tier Fund's worldwide network of partners and local churches are delivering practical solutions from new farming techniques to tree planting to projects tackling the waste crisis uh, and so many others um, like improving access to water. With your support, they can help families to adapt to our changing climate. To give, please visit www.tierfund.org backslash COP26 service. Thank you. My strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless babe This gift of love and righteousness Gone by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live Light of the world by dark 